Hey guys, so how do you read the Bible as a beginner? It's a very important question because a lot of people, like yourself maybe, feels a little bit overwhelmed when it comes to reading the Bible because it's big and, I mean, it's God's Word, is the best seller in the world. And uh, it's, it's not just one book. When you open it, you start to realize it's a collection of books and in it you'll find things like poetry, history, prophecy, wisdom literature, eyewitness accounts of Jesus, mind-blowing apocalyptic descriptions of the past, present, and future. And it's so much more than just that. So in this video, I'm going to give you seven tips that's going to help you to read the Bible as a beginner. These tips is going to help you to save a little bit of time and it's also going to help you to grow with God and His Word. So let's get to it. Hey, now just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel, I'm Daniel and welcome to DLM Christian Lifestyle. Subscribe and also click that notification bell so you won't miss any of the next videos. Now, let's start with the first tip. Now the first thing you gotta do, and this is probably one of the most important thing, things, is that you got to get the right Bible. There's a lot of different Bible translations out there, and then there's also a lot of fake Bibles where people altered and changed the Bible to fit in with their belief or their religion. So the goal here is to read the original Bible. Now it's important to know that there is over 20,000 sources of which we can put the Bible together in its original form. And the Bible we have today is still the same, the still original Bible. And so you might ask, okay, but Daniel, so what translation should I read then? Well, for an easier read, you can read any of the following translations. The New King James, the New International Version, the English Standard Version, and the New American Standard Bible. Now, looking at these translations, um, languages change, right? So they have to translate scripture, right? But a lot of people seem to worry and stress and say, hey, how can you trust it if it's been translated so many times? But with the translations I've just given you, we have over 20,000 of the original copies of the Bible. And then they look at that and then they translate it correctly. So when you look at the, these translations that I've just given you, there's no differences in the fundamental truths or the, the fundamental doctrine of Christianity. So it means that you can trust it. All right, so you got your Bible. What do you do next? Just dig in and start reading? Well, you can, but it's better to go into your room, close the door, go into a quiet place, and then first pray to God. Just relax and stop thinking about everything that's going on in the outside world. And ask God to help you to understand the Bible, which is His Word. And then you open the Bible. All right, now when you look at the Bible, you get two main parts, right? You get the Old Testament over here, the thicker, bigger part, and then you got the New Testament. Now the Old Testament, it's got to do with everything before Jesus came to earth. And then the New Testament starts with John the Baptist and when Jesus came down to earth, right? And uh, what you wanna do is you wanna start with the New Testament because it will help you to understand the Old Testament better when you go and read that a little bit later. But if you start with the Old Testament first, it's gonna be a lot of stuff that you just won't be able to understand. It's not gonna make a lot of sense. So start with the New Testament first. It shows you what Jesus and the apostles really said and really did. So this is then the second half of the Bible. Now, if you look at the New Testament, the first four books of the Bible are called the Gospels. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And these four are eyewitness accounts of Jesus' life and His teachings. So they are very similar to one another, and they give you the same kind of story of Jesus, each in their own words. But I would suggest that you read John first. It's the last of the four, so it's like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then you find John. John is a little bit, I would say, it's like it's colored in a little bit more. He explains a little bit more, so start with that. So in John, you'll find some of the simplest passages, but also some of the deepest. And after John, you just carry on to Acts. Now Acts tells you the story of how the church started to spread through the world and what the disciples did after Jesus went to heaven. 
And then after Acts, you will find Romans, which is written by the Apostle Paul, which is very, very interesting. You gotta read that to understand justification. But then you just continue and you finish the New Testament. Or after you can read Genesis and Exodus, which are the first two books of the Old Testament. But I would suggest that you finish the New Testament first, because then when you go back to the Old Testament, things are gonna make a lot more sense. All right, now you know which translation to read and also where to start, right? But you also need to set a goal and a routine. So for example, if you want to read the Bible in one year, you can do it. But you probably need to read around five to six pages every day, which is doable. So set your alarm clock at a certain day, for example, in the morning when your mind is fresh or if it's not fresh, make it fresh. Just get a cup of coffee and get into God's word. There's nothing better than to start your day the right way. Another tip is to get a good Bible commentary. Now, this saved me a lot of time, uh, especially if you're fresh and you don't know a lot about Scripture yet, right? Because to understand a certain context or a certain verse, you need to understand the chapter. You need to understand the whole book that you're reading. For example, if you're reading in Romans, and you also need to understand that context with the whole New Testament. And when you're new to the Bible, it's sometimes hard to understand. So when you get a Bible commentary, or even just a good handbook that will help you and guide you and, and answer a few questions that you might need about that certain passage, it's gonna save you so much time and help you to grow faster. A lot of few good options for in the video description that you can check out. All right, now it's good to just read your Bible by yourself, to close the door, to have that privacy where it's just you and God. But it's also good to have fellowship with other people. So you don't always have to read alone. You can study with other people, with other brothers and sisters in Christ. And to do that, you can just, if you don't have any friends yet, go to a, a good local church and go meet a few people. Most of the churches also have these study groups or they have these uh, cell groups or fellowship groups certain times of the week where they come together once or even some that's very dedicated, maybe twice a week. And they have fellowship. They spend some time together and you might meet a few very good friends. Now, over the years, whenever I travel to a new country, um, the first thing I usually did was to find a church and to find a group where I can have fellowship with people. And I've met so many good friends over the year, years that I'm still friends with. So I can't emphasize enough how important it is to read with other people and how it's gonna help you to grow with God. And remember this, in Proverbs 18 verse 24, God says, one who has unreliable friends soon come to ruin. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. All right, next one, read your Bible with colored pencils. Like these. Daniel, what do you mean with colored pencil? Well, if you mark what you're reading with certain colors, certain things in the Bible that have certain meanings, it helps scripture to kind of pop out. And it's easier to build on your earlier notes. So this is how I do it. I use yellow for God's promises, brown for sin, green for prayer, dark blue for angels, purple for anything that's got to do with the devil and demons, light blue I use when I feel God is talking to me spiritually about something, and red when God speaks in his own words. So you can use my system or you can just use your own kind of color method where you choose the colors and the, and the meanings for yourself but it is gonna help you out a lot and at the same time you're gonna enjoy it a lot now just some last advice and this is very very important you need to listen up there's nothing wrong with the Bible but the problem is the way that people interpret the Bible and how they take it out of context to understand one sentence you need to understand its meaning within the chapter and within the book you're reading and how that fits in with all the other books in the Bible. The Bible is a very deep book. Let me just go here. It says in 2 Timothy 3 verse 16, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So the Bible is your main source of truth. 
If the church that you go to or the pastor that you listen to says anything that is not in Scripture, it's very, very dangerous. So read the Bible, study it, get to know it, and then you won't be easily misled by anyone. If you have any other questions, ask it in the comment section below and check out some more of my videos. And if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and we will talk soon. I love you. Cheers. Take my life in the